So, uh, as you can see, sitting in the woods has not uh, exactly done it any favors. Looks like the, look at this. If I can get one of these off, this is gonna be a pain. I don't know if it's mice or just father time or what, maybe a combination of the two. Yeah, look at this. There's, there's the boot. Looks like mice, looks like little teeth marks. Wires just falling apart. Probably try to get this off. I know the engine turns free. Let's see. Yeah, so the engine turns over engine turns free so I know it's not locked up uh, I've got a tune-up kit so I can put new plugs and wires on this thing let me I want to get this off so I can see what we're working with get all this out from under here usually these bigger or usually these old American engines have a bigger spark plug in them yep all right Well, I guess first things first. Oil looks black as coal, but it is at the right level. I don't see rust on the dipstick. It does. It's oil. It's not got watery mixture in it, so that's good. So it's a good sign that it didn't like have a head gasket blown or something. That's. You know, when, when you find something out in the woods or out in the field, you always are concerned, like, why? Why did somebody park this? Was it because it was knocking? Did it blow a head gasket? You know, why? If it's perfectly running, why did they abandon it? So, always a concern. But sometimes people just get, get a uh, new vehicle and just be like, oh, okay, I'll hang on to the old one just, just as like a farm truck. And then they move on or unfortunately die or whatever whatever happened and then 20 30 40 years later you come along so just it always always depends boy these are really frozen on here it's gonna be interesting there's like mud daubers all in some of these I want to try to break some of that loose before I take these plugs out just so I'm not dropping literal dirt into the cylinders. Let me see what I got. I got a stick. I'm going to try to knock some of the dirt out. Let me put you in a better angle. This is fun. I'm having fun, aren't you? Oh God, isn't this fun, guys? <sighs> of course, of course that just pulled out. Oh, old silicone oh, spark plug boots. I swear they like glue themselves over time. Should be good enough to get my tool on there. All right. Spark plug one. Very black. Looks like it was running rich, which is fine. I'd rather it run rich than run lean. Oh, man. Damn. That puppy is on there. Oh, whoops. 
<clears throat> hmm. Hmm. We have to get the old cheater bar. Let's bend that slightly. Twisting off or not. So I'm gonna let that one marinate. I'll try some others. Hopefully they come out easier. Oh, that's again not things you want to hear. I think the hood was definitely left up on this thing. I'm just gonna go back, back and forth. So I just loosened it a little bit, hopefully. Now I'm gonna tighten it a little bit. The whole theory is to get the penetrating lube to start creeping down those threads to help us out. I don't know. So loosen. A little old trick for you guys. Loosen and then tighten. Loosen tighten. That helps break the, th the threads free. So tightening, tightening. Now loosen, loosen, loosen. Let it sit for a second. Loosening, loosening, let's try some others. Oof. One's coming out easier than the others. Let me spray it down. I think this thing was definitely left with the hood open because spark plugs should not come out this difficult. Spark plugs should have something like 18 to 22 foot pounds on them. All right, let's let that marinate for a second. it okay well that one's good that one's super easy Let's see how hard the last one's gonna be nope last one's easy all right so three three easy ones three hard ones Is 
so this uh, cylinder two spark plug wire or spark plug is not happy. Anytime you've got a two and a half foot extension on a spark plug, not good. Let's see how you are. Cylinder three is starting to get far easier. Right. Uh, cylinder two and cylinder four, definitely the worst. Tightening. All right. <sighs> I might just go for it on number two. Hopefully it doesn't snap off. Feels like it's getting easier. My tight and loose and tight and loose and with deep creep creeping down the threads the whole time has helped. Feels like it's coming loose. <sighs> Let me get these two all the way out since we've made it this far. All right. Cylinder five again. Very rich. Cylinder six, probably going to be rich too. All right. Ooh. Focus. It's got some funky, funky growth on it. It's like it was grounding out, or, I don't know, I don't know. Probably just from sitting moisture being in there. Rich, mighty power core spark plugs. All right. Time to just do or die with number two. All right. We got it out. Got it out without stripping the threads out. It's rich too. Ah, that was a struggle. Um, all right, so down to one. Whew. Down to mighty. I cannot believe I had head bolts that were easy to remove than this damn spark plug. Holy shit, we did it, boys. That was a saga. If you made it this far, you're a real one. Thank you for sitting through all that. It's, it's also, it's also rich. It's just looking at the threads. I have all my threads. So we did not rip the threads out of this thing. Good. God almighty. 
I think that is, I think that's the worst set of spark plugs I've ever dealt with. All right. So now I'm putting deep creep in the cylinders because we're going to try to turn this thing over and I want to lube everything as best I can because this thing's been sitting for years and years and years. So it's going to have no top end lube at all. I'm trying to give everything its best chance not to suffer damage and hurt itself. That cylinder was at the bottom. Yeah, look at that. All right, hang tight, I'm gonna get a battery. Okay, I moved you a little bit because if this thing turns over, stuff's gonna fly out of those cylinders and I don't want to spray my camera, so. Oh, here's a negative. So remember, fellas, if they sell it, and say it's a wrench. The package says it's a wrench. The little tag on the shelf says wrench. It's a hammer. <sighs> Please turn over, that would be awesome. Jump box, just in case. All right, let's see. So the key doesn't do anything. Could be, I mean, could be one of 20 different things. Oh, that's cute. Look at this. There's a little, little plant growing right here in the engine bay. It's what you want. Um, hmm. Could be the starter. I don't know if this thing has a neutral safety switch. I don't know. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just try to bypass it and see what happens. So I think we're in neutral. Hope we're in, hope we're in neutral. We're gonna find out. Mm -hmm. ah! That certainly seemed to turn over. Let's uh, let's put these in here. These champion plugs that I found in the glove box, made in USA champion plugs from Lord knows what, M M C M L X X I V. That is 1950, 60, 70, 84. 1984 is what M C M L X X I V is MCM so M's a thousand C is 100 M's a thousand so that is 100 before a thousand after a thousand so 1900 L is 50 so 1950 XXX is 10 10 10 so 50 60 70 80 and then IV is 1 before 5 which is 4 so 1984 is what MCM LXXX IV is um, that was the last time they like changed their packaging. These are probably more from like the nineties, but still we're going to put these in since we, the plugs that were in it just look like death and these are free in the glove box. So let's put these in. I don't know why, but I've seen so many people, uh, over tighten spark plugs. You only really need like 18, 22, something like that foot pounds to properly tighten a spark plug. At least on these old, old trucks, you know, old, old stuff. Starting all the thread by hand. There we go. That one started good. There started good. Not 
going to mess with the gap or anything on this. We're just trying to see if this runs. I'm not trying to drive it to work tomorrow. So, mm. just trying to see if we got power. The distributor cap looks new. Er, well, I mean, 20 something years old, newer, but looks like it was. Let me let me put it this way. It looks like it was changed. Uh, near to the time it was parked. So I'm going to assume the cap is fine. And I've got a highly, highly calibrated elbow to torque these. All right. Right there. there. Right there. So all I'm doing is getting them to where they stop turning. Right. Wait for it. Right there. It stops turning. Right there. And then little. That's it. Turn, 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 turn. All right. It stopped. Just a little, eh. I don't know. After you replace about 15,000 spark plugs, you just, you know, it's like a muscle memory thing. In earlier in my shit boxing career, I'd pull out the, pull out all the right tools, have a torque stick or something. Now I just, I kind of know. Interesting. It comes with, oh no, it comes with everything. Sorry. Didn't see the rotor at first. I was like, does it come with a cap and no rotor? But no, it came with a rotor and some uh, grease for the plug boots that we will use to prevent what happened trying to take the boots off where they were stuck, stuck, stuck. All right. what we're looking like in here so let me see if I can show you um, let me zoom you so you can see definitely some corrosion yeah look at that right there definitely some corrosion so that's nothing you can scrape off with a pocket knife, maybe hit it with a little bit of emery cloth or a bit of sandpaper or something, but we've got, we got a new one, so why not? Rotor looks really good. So I might throw that back in the old glove box as a spare. All right, new rotor on. Let's see. So, all right. Beautiful. Let's just take a moment to appreciate how easy it is to work on old stuff. The spark plugs took me what? <laughs> Three minutes to thread them in, torque them down, put on a cap. Gotta love it. Um, so, the longest ones are obviously going to be on the end of the engine because the distributor is pretty much in the middle. So, I'm going to take all my wires here. Alright, so, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. All right, so the one that has a 90 degree angle on both ends, that's going to be for my coil. So let's set that aside. This little bit of grease doesn't take much. 
kind of wiggle it a little bit just to spread that grease around. All right, we are seated on there. Again, doesn't take much, just a little, little something, something. Then I will put it on there, kind of twist it as it goes on. There's number one. Oh, my battery's about to die, so uh, let me hook you up to a battery bank really quick. Let me pause you. All right, I've got a power bank going to the USB-C port, so we should be good now for the rest of the video. Where was I? Uh, my old cap have it to show you? No, it does not. Um, my new cap I put on has a one cast into it, so I know that's cylinder one. Uh, 153624 is the firing order on these. Sit, go still. All right. Uh, beautiful. Yeah, it looks like a good angle right there. Uh, three. Well, actually, I messed up. Three can be the shortest, shortest one. Twist it around, twist it around. That should be good. And am I going to go over or under? I guess over. Twist all the way around. Mm -hmm. Put it on. Twist it. Up. Yeah, it should clear really well. Twist it all the way. Yeah, nice and greasy. There we go, nice and greasy. under here twist it around like so twisty 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 all right that worked out well none of the wires are colliding with each other last little bit for the coil There we go. All right. Um, let me clean the center of the coil out a little bit. It's got old grease in it. Yeah, there we go. That looks better. Just that easy. So, throw all my junk in the floorboard. All right, so plugs, wires, cap, rotor. I have a just Amazon.com Chinese knockoff of a Carter wire to throw on, kind of just temporarily just to see if we fire. Um, do have the original. I'm gonna rebuild that, have not soaked it yet. So I'm just gonna use this to see if we have fire and if it runs. Um, and then if it does, I'll, I'll rebuild the carb. So hang tight while I go get some gaskets. All right, so I wanna put the carb on, but there, there's so much 
just vacuum monstrosity going on with this engine. Uh, I kind, yeah, I kind of want to delete it. I kind of want to delete it. So this whole chunk right here, I think I'm going to cut this and just delete all of this right here right now it will definitely make it easier to troubleshoot um, a non-running issue if I do have spark and it's not running right so let's just go ahead and off So this is the distributor advance. We'll keep that, obviously. All this stuff can go bye-bye. Yeah. Hang tight for a second. I'm gonna remove all of these and uh, put new vacuum caps on them. All right, for the sake of simplicity, uh, friends do not let friends drive around with all of this on a carbureted engine. So, done away with that. <sighs> My gosh, there's so much more room now. This heat riser can go to at some point. Oh yeah. Holy smoke, I can like crawl in the engine bay and work sitting under the hood on this thing now. Um, let's put some new caps there. Glad I did that. All the all the hoses, all the vacuum caps, all the everything rubber was just obliterated. That's too big. Let's do How about you. Eventually this can come out, but in the meantime, we've capped that off, off, so when I do, well, let me say, if I get this thing running, being presumptuous here, I'm hoping, speaking out of hope, if this thing runs, I will not be running it long because we've got just all these dead leaves everywhere, so we've got a massive fire hazard, so I just want to hear it run for a couple of seconds and then... I will know it's worth cleaning all this engine bay out, especially like this. This is now wide open, so it's just going to be shooting exhaust right there. <coughs> so I need to go find some shorter studs for the carburetor now because we have deleted that plate that was rose up here. Um, so yeah, let me pause you and I will be right back after I hopefully find something to stick in there that's shorter.
so I went to my garage because these look familiar. Uh, went up to a small block Chevrolet intake manifold I've got and pulled some bolts off of it. Aha! The hunch was right. Maybe? Yes. Okay. So, small block Chevrolet intake manifold bolts will work for carb bolts on a 306, the more you know. Um, shoot, okay, well, let me, all right, so, real quick, this hole right here should be for the air pump. So the air pump shoots air into the exhaust through this hole um, to basically defeat emissions back in the day. So like if you're getting smogged in California, instead of actually making the exhaust cleaner by having like a more efficient engine that has less, you know, uh, emissions coming out the tailpipe, what they did back in the day is put on these air pumps to shoot air into the exhaust to basically water down the exhaust to seem cleaner because there's less parts per million uh, emissions coming out the tailpipe when really it's the same amount. Whether you have an air pump or not, the engine's producing the same exhaust, just they're shooting air into it to have more clean air in there to fool the emission system uh, or the computers into thinking the exhaust is cleaner than it really is. It's sort of like the diesel gate scandal with uh, Volkswagen back in the day. It, you're not really, you're not really having any cleaner emissions. You're just making the smog sniffer think the ox the tailpipe emissions are cleaner than they really are. So. Air pumps are pretty silly. It was just a loophole back in the day. Obviously, they can't do that anymore. But yeah, this is where air goes into the exhaust, so I'm not worried about having that open right now. Um, I can tap that and put a plug in later if this engine runs and is worth, you know, bringing back from the dead. That's your fun little tidbit about air pumps. They really don't do shit. They just rob, they rob horsepower unnecessarily. Oh no, damn it. All right, so what I'm gonna have to do, so you can see this will not go in there. So let me pause you. I'm going to take the base of this carburetor off enough to get this bolt in there. So hold tight everybody. Okay, so all I did is loosen this, this, and this to get this body to separate from this just enough to be able to get this in. I just had to barely clear that. All right, let me get a wrench. Um, I will pause you while I tighten this because it's going to go super slow. I'm not going to make you sit through all that. So, something to note. I see people over tighten carburetors like a lot. You don't have to be that tight. You just want the gasket to seat and just have a little bit of oomph on them so that they don't uh, back off or get wobbled to them and create a vacuum leak. So, just snug them down don't have to if you tighten the carb too much you'll bend the base and create a uh, vacuum leak all right so we have deleted the emissions deleted my god 9 10 12 vacuum hoses deleted the air pump so exhaust is going to try to come out here if we get this engine running we'll we'll tap that and put a brass plug in later um but yeah, I just need to hook up the fuel to this. Um, I'll undo the fuel line and put a little bottle of gasoline in the fender 
and we'll find out uh, if the fuel pump runs. Hang tight. All right, so I have the fuel system that we used to see if this thing would run. So quick side note, if you like what you are seeing trying to get this thing running, click on my profile because I did a video on this too. So if you are into bringing old hunks of junk back to life, um, first of all, subscribe because I got a lot more videos coming. I've got all sorts of stuff to see if it runs or not. I'm constantly reviving stuff like this, getting old vehicles out of the woods. So if you are liking what we're doing to this, click on my profile because I got more content for you. We just did a video to see if this would run. So, yeah. So, let's get this thing off of here. on some bitch mittens now that I'm dealing with fuel that way I don't have my hand just absolutely reek all right so we now have the fuel system let me put you on hold um the battery cables are pretty rough on this thing, like really, really rough. So I might have to put you on pause for a second while I go. I might have to run to the store and get some cables because these are pretty darn roached. Okay, so I don't want to drive all the way to the store for some cables. So I yoinked the negative cable, the positive cable to the switch and the switch itself off of that truck because this switch, I don't know if it works or not. So I do know this one works. So I robbed the positive cable, the negative cable. Um, this cable going down to the starter is pretty bad. So I might have to yoink that too, but we're gonna see, we're gonna see if this cable works. So hold tight while I uh, hook some more stuff up. So, uh, let's just see if it turns over for starters. She made sounds. This uh, throttle cable's in a bit of a bind, so we're just going to remove that for now. Definitely shooting exhaust out of there. That's exciting. That is exciting. So I see a little bit of gas in the filter, but I can't tell if that's just dripping out like residual 
I need some more starting fluid. I'm gonna give her a big healthy shot of gas. It's a big engine, big engines like lots of gas. you for a second I'm going to see if I can find a little funnel and see if I can fill the carburetor bowl up with gas all right Trying her little heart out. Oh. Um. Let's see what that does. Is amazing oh, I'm so freaking stoked right now if any of you watching have ever brought something back from the dead you know exactly what I'm feeling let's cut this that air pump was chirping don't need it um, so the fuel pump does appear to be dead it ran for plenty long enough that it should have pulled some gas it might be pulling a little bit the, the diaphragm and the mechanical fuel pump is probably di uh, dry rotted and split so it's like producing a little bit of suction but not a ton Let's do this one more time whole video boils down to that that is amazing carburetors leaking I was expecting that this carburetor I took it off a vehicle because it had a, a slight leak but it's perfect for videos like this where I'm just trying to see if something runs okay so this is amazing so it ran uh, I did not hear any knocks it didn't even like 
peck or tick like a collapsed lifter had to kind of re-expand. It just kind of, once it was running, it was running like pretty darn well. No, no bad sounds. Let's check the oil. Earl looks good. I don't see the first metal flake, which is what you want. You could hear the exhaust leak. So we've got an opening here and then that pipe I cut off. You can, I don't know if you can see it from your angle, but that pipe is kind of smoking a little bit. Um, this beautiful, I mean, I think it's beautiful. You might think it's a piece of junk, but I think that it's beautiful. This uh, beautiful 79 short bed, three on the tree, runs. I'm so happy. I'll get some tires too, wheel cylinders, probably stainless brake lines. They're they're cheap for a CNC pre-bent, like beautiful brake lines. Um, well worth the money, about 150, 170 bucks for a whole bumper to bumper set. <sighs> Didn't want to run it too long because the radiator, I've, let's look at it now, I'm sure it's empty. Oh yeah, she's super empty. It's like a dead spider laying on top. So I'll put water in it next time. So there, there will be a follow-up video if you want to see this thing go up and down the road. All right, boys and girls, on your deathbed, do you really think you're going to be saying, man, I had so many great memories in my 2024 Kia Forte? Probably not. So if you know where there's an old car or truck sitting out in the woods, in a field, in a shed, get it. There's no time like the present to go get it. Usually does not take much to bring them back to life. They're easy to work on and they just do not make vehicles that look like this anymore. These old trucks have souls. Your uh, 2024 Hyundai Tucson doesn't have a soul. I'm sorry. So bring these things back to life. They deserve a second chance. Keep them on the road.